got. Uh, Booger McFarlane every Wednesday is with us here on Off the Bench. Boog, the versatile guy over at ESPN, talking NFL, talking college football. He was hard on our guy, Miles Brennan, during the game on Saturday. Brennan threw for over 300, two interceptions, three scores, going into week two at Vanderbilt as a starter. We'll talk about that with Boog coming up here on uh, on OTB. Start us off this uh, with this, though, Boog, who you like in this uh, NBA Finals? You like the Heat or you like LeBron and the Lakers? Uh, I'm going to go with the Lakers. I, I think LeBron is on a mission. And in basketball, you're never going to go wrong betting on the most talented team. Yeah. And I get the grit and the toughness of the Heat and all that good stuff. But yeah, Anthony Davis, LeBron James, the two of the, the, the top five players in the game. So I'm going to go with the talent. Do you think he cares he's playing Miami at all? Do you think that's a storyline at all? I've been listening to Lebitard all you know for the last couple of weeks, and they saying that this is a big deal to LeBron. Um, do, do you think this means anything to him that his tenth final going up against his former team? I think it's more of a big deal to Miami than it is to LeBron. Sure. Like as a player, <laughs> you know, LeBron has played for Cleveland, Miami, and now the Lakers. Like, sign the check. You know, let me play basketball. I, I don't think as a player you get sentimentally attached to 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 teams unless it's Cleveland for LeBron because mm-hmm. he grew up there. Other than that, hey man, sign the check. Let's keep it moving. Uh, Booger McFarland Weekly is brought to you by Central Plumbing Company here on OTB. Remember, residential or commercial plumbing services online, centralplumbing.org. Everybody has reacted to uh, to LSU down in this part of the world about what they saw on Saturday. They are pretty hard on the defense and Bo Pelini, Miles Brennan, uh, people are looking for improvement. What did you see Saturday from LSU? Well, here's what I'll say. Uh, I think everyone that watches this team has to forget about 2019. I, I think you're judging 2020 through the prism of 2019. That's your fault. This team is not going to look like that. This team is not as, as – as, I'm not going to say it's not as talented, but it doesn't have as much experience. So stop watching 2020 through the prism of 2019. That's number one. Secondly, you you have to, as a coaching staff, LSU has to form a game plan around this team. So you may not be able to line up and go four or five wide shotgun and let the quarterback deal because Miles Brennan can't do that just yet. Uh, Miles Brennan looked very nervous. He looked like a deer uh, with his head cut off sometimes. And that's not his fault, to be honest with you. The guy's making his first start. He's only thrown, he's thrown less than 100 passes in his career. Yeah. So as a coaching staff, I got to know that. Give him a running game. Help him out. Don't just let him say, hey, Miles, it's on you. Let's just go deal. Um, secondly, you know, if, if, if from a defensive standpoint, I thought the most disappointing part of the game was not the fact that LSU's corners got burned. It was the fact that they got burned repeatedly and the coaching staff didn't help them out. Mm-hmm. The definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. At some point, Bo Pelini's got to realize these guys aren't playing man-to-man to the level that I need them. So guess what? I'm going to call something else. But Bo Pelini continued to call man-to-man all day long. Jordy, T-Bob, check yes. this out. Preach. I went back and watched the tape, okay? Mississippi State ran two routes. I know. <laughs> crossing, crossing routes and fade. They ran the same play. 37 times. <laughs> it was either a fade or a crossing route. I get home and I'm like, oh, just play a little zone coverage. But for whatever reason, Bo Pelini talked to Ed Ogeron and saying, yeah, we're going to come after Bo, come after Mike Leach. And anybody who's watched the air raid offense knows that you're going to get a lot of quick screens, you're going to get a lot of crossing routes, you're going to get a lot of deep shots. And even even Mike Lee said, I, I was surprised that they, they played yeah. it so tight. Yeah. So uh, I think the most disappointing part of the whole game was the lack of adjustments. And I'm not going to blame it on Bo Pelini, okay? Because Bo Pelini is the D coordinator. Ed Ogeron, you're the head coach. If your D coordinator's not doing it, you get on the headset and you say, hey, let's make an adjustment. So it was an epic fail from the coaching staff on Saturday. The offense scored 34 points, uh, 27 because they got a pick six. So 34 points should be enough to beat Mississippi State. It was an epic fail by the defense, and it was an epic fail by the coaching staff from making for the lack of adjustments that they needed to make. 
Hey, I mean, I can't really add anything. To that are we good to move on to the NFL? I mean, that's good analysis. I mean, I well, real quick, because it feels good, it feels very valid to hear you say that, Bug, because you know, obviously, you you are a defensive expert. So, yeah, that's great. But real quick, before we flush LSU, where, where do you sit on Brennan? Uh, Miles Brennan, I think, has some talent. Uh, he's got to show me that he's not afraid. Too many times, as a defensive player, I've, I've, I've been on the other side of that line, and I can look into your eyes, and I can know whether or not you got game. All right? I can look into your eyes, and I can know whether or not you are ready to wet the bed. And there were a couple times that CBS showed Miles Brennan's eyes, mm-hmm. and I thought, uh-oh. Yep. That's the yeah. look that I'm used to seeing when it's time to put my ears back and go get this guy. Now, <laughs> so you're like, you got that like wolf sense. You, you can smell the fear. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not necessarily fear. It's just being timid and not, not, knowing, not knowing what to expect. And guess what? That's his first game. Mm-hmm. I think you've got to realize that had LSU had a regular season, we would have opened up with, you know, Southwest Missouri Directional State. He could have got all those jitters out. But now when you open up against Mississippi State and it counts, you got to come up with a game plan. I expect LSU to run the football a little bit more. You got all those. You got Emory and those those backs back there, Curry and Pride. You got, you got to run the football, play yeah. action pass, protect. LSU's got a ton of receivers, but don't put the game on Miles Brennan's shoulders until he shows you he's capable of doing that. And right now, he's not capable of that. So it's up for Steve Minger and Scott Linehan. Do what this kid can do best. Again. Everyone in Baton Rouge and every LSU fan needs to stop judging this team through the prism of last year. Yeah. That season is over. 16 players got drafted. It's going to be a different year. Doesn't mean it can't be successful with wins, but it's going to be different. But if this coaching staff doesn't make some adjustments as far as defensively, offensively, then to me, that's the bigger issue. The players are going to be fine. They will adjust. But as, as a coaching staff, your job is to put players – in position to succeed. Bo Pelini did not put those corners in position to succeed, and Steve Insminger and Scott Linehan did not put the offense in position to operate at full capacity, meaning play action, meaning allowing uh, Miles Brennan to get comfortable. I'm like, hey, okay, that's enough. I, I, I could go on for an hour. That's enough on LSU. <laughs> okay, okay, I, okay, I, I was hey, about to hey. give you that. I was about to give you that. Stand and ho. Book, uh, that was good. That was just good. just, just good. to reinforce your play action, you can carry this forward if you didn't see this stat. Brennan was 8 of 9 for 127 and two TDs off of the play action. So certainly you hope that's something that they start to lean on and build through the running game next game. Uh, all right, uh, let's let's move on to the NFL. Boog, uh, Monday Night Football. Well, we, we, we thought it was going to be a, a hell of a battle. Uh, and then Patrick Mahomes came out and just did Patrick Mahomes. Before we get to Mahomes, though, what is it that the Chiefs defense does to Lamar Jackson that makes him seem so human that these other NFL teams can't seem to replicate? Okay, before we get to that, I need your, uh, your observation of your Superman, your hero, Lamar Jackson. Tell me oh, what you thought. Steve okay, Bob. so now you're going to victory lap. After I'm, now I'm you're just, big, after my man won I'm, MVP after he won like 14 regular seasons and games in a row because he T-Bob, loses T-Bob. to the best player in the NFL. Now we're victory T-Bob. lapping. T. Bob, LSU won a national championship. You tell me how 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 people in Baton Rouge feel after Monday. I mean yeah. after Saturday. Okay, that's let's, a, let's not talk about last year. It's a good counterpoint. So, that is a good, a good counterpoint. counterpoint. Well done, touche. So, so tell me, tell me what you saw Monday. Uh, to be honest, um, I, I, I don't, I, I wasn't I watching the game. Lie. No, well, I'm saying I wasn't watching the game analytically enough. That's why I'm asking you. Like I was kind of going in and out of it, watching Pat Mahomes, like throw a bomb and then like cooking a little more dinner. So I don't know. Like how, how did they, how did they shut down Lamar Jackson? Like that yards per attempt makes no sense to me. Here's the thing about Lamar Jackson is that he is still, and I, and I know this is your hero. He's still a better runner than he is a passer. <laughs> now, his receivers let him down a little bit and drop some balls, and they got to correct that. But when you throw for 97 yards, T-Bob? Yeah, no, okay, I, it's, 90, it's crazy. It's 90, crazy. Justin Herbert threw for 300 against the same Kansas City defense six, uh, eight days before. So, L- Lamar and that, and, that, and that Ravens offense has still got a lot to do uh, when, it, when it comes to the passing game. Uh, so, so wait, book on on Sunday. I swore that Russell Wilson was the best quarterback in the league. Then, like T. Bob said, I turned on the television Monday night, and the best player on the planet flexed. 
Um, w- what do you make of Wilson and Mahomes and, and how they're playing that position right now? Uh, Mahomes is on a different level as far as talent. But as far as how the game is being played, he and Russell Wilson are playing on a comparable level uh, right now. There are just things that Mahomes can do that Russell can't. I'll give you a prime example. The throw to Miko Hardeman where where, yes. Jesus, where he's bug. just drifting back and he I just mean, throws it off one leg. It, it makes no wrist. sense, dude. It he just, just flicks his wrist. Well, and, and So, Book, right there, like Hardman gets behind the safeties because you're not supposed to be able to make that throw, right? Like how he's fading to the left and he goes opposite field that deep. You're not supposed like they they had no idea he could get the ball there. Well, Hardman got behind because Marcus Peters jumped Tyreek Hill on the crossing route. Oh yeah, that's right. And Mah- and Mahomes knew that, and so I guarantee you, Marcus Peters is probably thinking there's no way he can make that throw. Mm-hmm. And as soon as he cocked that arm, you're like, okay, Put I guess wrong. Bucket. He put it in the bucket. I mean, so, it, what, so is it Wilson or Mahomes? Well, it's it's still as far as the most talented guy, it's Mahomes. As far as the MVP right now, I think it's Russell Wilson. Okay. I mean, I think I, I think Russell Wilson has more touchdowns than any completions right now, or it's pretty close. Like that's stupid. <laughs> Through three games, you, you that's made a, unbelievable. You made a great point last week about the Saints and Taysom Hill. Um, that, that it seems like they may be trying to force him into the game plan, and it cost him on Sunday night versus the Packers. What, what, what did you make of that game, and what do you make of Hill moving forward on how he fits in? Well, I think Hill's going to fit in the same way. Like, that's who Sean Payton uh, is. Like, that's what he wants to do with Taysom Hill. Uh, as far as the Saints, the Saints will be fine, man. Uh, offensively, I'm not concerned about their offense. Here's a stat for you. I'm sure you guys have seen this, but um, I, knowing T-Bob, he didn't tell the listeners. He just kept it to himself. <laughs> in the last 17 drives that the New Orleans Saints defense has faced, how many punts has the Saints One. defense forced? Uh, one. one. Oh, we did talk about that, bug. We did. <laughs> one. one. It's 17 drives. What the hell is going on? This defense is supposed to be good. Yeah, key word. supposed to be. Well, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> they are good right now. Uh, by the way, Boog, uh, so to your to your stat, um, right now Mahomes has four – or excuse me, Wilson has 14 incompletions and 14 touchdowns through the air. Well, so that's pretty, uh, that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty solid. I'll, I'll, I was pretty close. That's good. Oh, hell yeah. No, I mean, I, I'm saying I'm going to count that as a win in your book. Absolutely, dude. That just proves how unreal the level that Russell Wilson is playing at. Okay, well, we, we rarely ask you to look forward to games. Do you have a read on uh, who is this, Sunday? It's Patriots and Chiefs. Do you, do, do you think, like, because yeah. that feels like some of the AFC's best going toe to toe? I have a read. Chiefs win. Okay. <laughs> 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 That's my read. <laughs> Boog, have a great week, man. Hit him straight today. Later. Later, man. Central Plumbing Company every week. Booger McFarland. We roll on next.